guys, today we're going to do a book summary of the book called Quiet, The Power of Introverts. In this video, I'm going to share with you the top five ideas that I took away from this amazing book. So the main message of this book is that introverts are powerful and introverts are often very underrated in modern society, even though about one third of the population is naturally introverted. They just aren't glorified in the public. A lot of workplaces are not tailored to the strengths of introverts. And if you are introverted, I feel like society just makes you feel like you're you're not good enough or there's something wrong with you or you can't actually really accomplish anything great in life because you're naturally introverted and that is not at all true and the author illustrates that with a lot of evidence in her book. Okay? So the first idea that I took away from this book is that you have to identify if you are actually a true introvert, a true extrovert, or you might fall in between and be an ambivert. Okay, so if you are a true extrovert, being around people is going to drain you. So ask yourself the question, when I interact with people, if, if I go to events or large crowds and I'm with people all the time and then I come home from that, do I feel drained and tired? And if that happens often and you notice that, then you're probably a true introvert. True introverts like environments with little stimulation. They like libraries, they like quiet, they like solitude, they like time to think, recharge, and reflect. Introverts are naturally drawn towards that. Introverts are natural home bodies. Okay, and if you identify with this, you are most likely introverted. And they actually found in a study with babies, this is actually genetic, you're born being more introverted or extroverted or ambiverted in between. But introverted babies respond very, very strongly to stimulation. So they did an experiment with babies and they stuck a swab of soaked alcohol under their nose and simultaneously played a recording of balloons popping at the same time. And they found that introverted babies responded very strongly to it. Their, their blood pressure and their heart rate had like a sharp increase and they were crying and screaming. And that's because they are very hypersensitive to stimulation in their environment. They're more, they're more prone to having higher emotional reactions to stimulus in their environment. And that is why they prefer quieter, more low stimulation environments. Extroverts, on the other hand, extroverted babies had no response to the alcohol swab and the balloon poppings. There was no change in their heart rate or blood pressure and they didn't really respond to it at all. And so yeah, about 40% of babies had this low response kind of reaction. So it's really important to know, are you hypersensitive to a lot of stimulation in your environment? If you're an extrovert, the complete opposite applies. You thrive in crowds. You like being the center of attention. You like going to clubs with lots of people. You like interacting with people. When you have conversations or you go to an event with lots of people and you come home, you feel energized from it. Being with people and spending time with people is what gives you energy. Okay, and if you're the type of person that kind of identifies with both of these situations, with both of these characteristics, you are probably an ambivert, which means that you are a little bit of both. Two great questions to ask yourself to figure out if you're an actual ambivert is that you enjoy spending time out with people, but you need the odd day here and there to recharge, be by yourself, enjoy your solitude, and kind of like recharge and you enjoy being with people but it does take a toll on you and it does drain you a little bit just not as fast as it would for a, a true introvert and another way to tell if you're an ambivert is when you meet someone new or you're interacting with someone depending on this other person's energy you will balance their energy out so if they're very in your face outgoing straightforward they're like classic extrovert you'll actually be the one that tends to listen more. You won't talk as much, you won't be as outgoing just because their energy is so overpowering. But if you're with someone that's very quiet, very withdrawn and shy, you'll take the leadership role and be the one to do most of the talking, make most of the conversation. You'll be the one that's got the overpowering energy. So you'll change your energy based on who you're interacting with. 
that means that you're an ambivert. You're a bit of both. And I actually, I actually identified with the ambivert type the most. Depending on all of these things, identify are you a true extrovert, true introvert, or are you an ambivert? Moving on to the next idea, I really want to just hone in on this whole are you introverted? Don't confuse being introverted with being shy, okay? They are two different things. When you're shy, you don't want to talk to people, you're withdrawn, you're just, you know. Mm. It could just be because you're afraid of being judged negatively by others, okay? But it doesn't necessarily mean that you're introverted. It could just mean that your fear of being judged has taken over your personality and your natural expressiveness. And, but in reality, you want to interact with people. You want to go out. You want to have a great time with people. That's how you get your energy. Are you just afraid of being judged? Which is totally normal. Don't be ashamed of that. I was definitely had struggles with this throughout my teenage years and my early 20s. So if you're afraid of being judged, it's a totally natural part of being human. Or are you actually like truly introverted? The author gives a great example of this with Barbara Streisand. Barbara Streisand is a natural, true born extrovert. She loves getting out there, interacting with others, but she suffered from a severe case of stage fright. So even though it seemed like she was so introverted and just like mm, up in everybody's faces, as soon as she had to go on stage and be the center of attention, her fear of judgment took over her natural personality. So again, if you are a true introvert, you will naturally gravitate and want to be alone in a quiet environment, solitude. You'll just literally want time to sit and think by yourself. You will literally be drawn to that as a true introvert. It's important to know what you actually are. That's why I'm really getting into the details of how to identify it. The next idea is to play to your strengths depending on your personality type. You don't want to enter a career or a position that doesn't play to your strengths and place your weaknesses because you're going to perform poorly and you're not going to be happy either. You're not going to feel like in a flow state. So if you're an extrovert, this is great because most workplaces are tailored to extroverts. So you're consider yourself lucky if you're an extrovert. You're going to thrive in careers that involve interacting with people all the time. You're going to be an excellent public speaker, excellent politician, excellent teacher, anything that has to do with constantly interacting with people and you get your energy from that. You will thrive in all types of careers. <laughs> the possibilities are endless. Um, I also wanted to mention that if you're an extrovert, you are much better at dealing with busy, bustling, hectic environments, constant interruptions, and lots and lots of energy just swirling around you all the time. You're going to thrive in those type of environments like Wall Street, you know, corporate type of jobs. On the other hand, if you're an introvert, there are also many awesome careers that you would definitely be a match for. 90% of Olympic athletes have identified themselves as introverted. Okay, so introverted people are the people who get into deep states of deep work and deep concentration. A lot of introverts are writers. A lot of them are investment bankers, really good investment bankers, because it requires you to be alone and think about all the things that are happening and then act from what you have concluded in your thoughts while in solitude, right? You'd be great as an academic researcher, as a scholar. So if you're an extrovert, it's best to seek out jobs where you're working alone because that is where you shine. So I actually am gonna give you an example from my life. I am, I'm gonna say more of an introvert than an extrovert. Um, even though I do enjoy going to the club once in a while, I'm not like 100% introvert. But I started off in jobs that involved customer service, serving, interacting with people on a daily basis. And because I'm not naturally extroverted, it was very, very draining on me. And I performed poorly. I didn't enjoy my job. It didn't play to my strengths because I had the type of mind that did best when it could focus on something uninterrupted. 
Then I found jobs where I worked alone. I worked as a haul truck driver in the oil sand. I found jobs being a cleaner, okay? Yes, it's not glorifying or anything like that, but you're, if you're in the type of situation where you're just starting out in the work world or where you're just trying to figure out what jobs you would be good at, if you're introverted, if you feel like you're more naturally introverted, you'll do best at jobs where you're working alone. So be like a shelf stalker. You're not interacting with people. You're just focused on one thing. Be a janitor. Again, you're just focused on one thing. You're not interacting with a whole bunch of people. Those types of jobs, you know? So once I took on those types of jobs where I was working by myself, focused on one thing, it was much less draining on myself. I didn't dread going to work. I didn't feel nearly as tired coming home from work, even though I did work a very physical job all day. It just wasn't energetically draining on me because I, I wasn't around people to drain me of energy. The fourth idea is to be aware of your weaknesses. So once you know how to play your strengths, it's just as important to know what you suck at. <laughs> so in the book, the author found that extroverts are very good motivators of people. They can just inject energy into people and motivate them to take action at an efficient level. They ran an experiment where they had introverted leaders versus extroverted leaders, and they wanted to see what they were good at and what they weren't so good at. And they found that extroverted leaders were very good at motivating and getting people to like work fast and work at the most efficient level that they could. So they're good at like, ooh, pumping you up, you know? And you could totally see that. Like look at the classic pep talk type of people. They're always in your face, brash, bold, extroverted, but they're good at getting you to change your emotional state. They're amazing at it. Introverts, on the other hand, were much better at listening to the suggestions of their team members, and often the suggestions of their team members were valid, and they actually changed the performance, or they ch they actually improved how efficient they could be based on tweaking the different ways that they do things. And unfortunately, extroverts aren't so good at that, listening to the suggestions of their team members, even though they could be very valuable and very helpful. So introverts were very open to amassing as much information that's possible for as, from as many people as possible in order to have the best method, the most logical method. So introverts and extroverts can take things away from that if you're extroverted listen to people more. Their information could help you in your life, improve your life. It doesn't always have to be about you, right? And if you're introverted, you obviously know and be aware that you're not the best at motivating people and maybe work on techniques for how to self-motivate. Because I also want to mention that if you're introverted, it's not like it's the be all end all. You can still be an amazing speaker. You can still learn to interact with people and learn how to be charismatic. If you want to learn how to be charismatic because you can learn how to be charismatic, it can happen over time and gradually if you practice the habits and the behaviors of naturally charismatic people, check out the book called The Charisma Myth. And the last idea is to learn how to identify what other people are. And it's not hard if you have any level of awareness around you of people, their behaviors, their body language, their tone of voice, the way they talk about things. It's not hard to identify if he or she is naturally introverted or naturally extroverted. And if you have to work with them, be aware of their natural strengths and weaknesses and play that to your advantage. So if you're working on a joint project with someone and it requires someone that's good at speaking, clearly you're gonna pick out the extrovert. But if you're working on a joint project with someone that requires deep research, you're not gonna pick an extrovert for that. You're gonna pick an introvert for that. And it can even apply to your children. Be aware of what your children naturally are. If your children are naturally extroverted, you're gonna to wanna to put them in activities that involve other people sports, brownies, cadets. But if they're introverted, you're gonna wanna put them in things that are gonna play to their strengths, you know? Art class, piano lessons, things where they're gonna work on something by themselves. It's important to know who your partner is. Are they extroverted? Are they introverted? 
your family members, it's totally going to benefit you if you understand how their mind works. So those are the five best ideas I got from this book. I thought this book was so interesting, so interesting because a lot of people just aren't aware of this whole dynamic of introverted and extroverted people. If you understand it at an in-depth level, like at the level that this book gets to, it can help you so much in your career and in your family life and just, you know, in general and with yourself too. Knowing yourself is so important. If you want more summaries, check out the app called Blinkist. This is where I got the information for this book. It's a book summary app where it gives you the main points of all of the best-selling non-fiction books out there. You have an endless selection of all the non-fiction books that you could possibly be interested in. And if you want to just get a really concise and core message recap of that book, you can find it on this app. Okay guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!